My name is Maxwell Wright, co-founder and creative director of TEDx Berkeley Valencia, and it is my pleasure to introduce a fascinating story from some people from Valencia, um, specifically six students, uh, five students and one supervisor from the Universidad Politécnica de Valencia, from the Department of the Makers Labs. And they're here with us today to tell us a story about this sonic train, a train that can travel an amazing speed. They'll be giving us some more information. And they are the ones who actually won a competition uh, launched by Elon Musk, uh, founder and CEO of PayPal, of SpaceX, of Tesla Motors. And they were competing against amazing teams uh, full of a lot of funding and a lot of advantage and, and support. They're here today to tell us the story of David against Goliath. So please help me welcome Dr. Vicente Dos Ruiz, mechanical engineer. Juan Vicente Balaguer, mechanical engineer. <laughs> David Pistoni Perez, mechanical engineer. Also, Germán Torres Royo, aerospace engineer. Ángel Benedicto Elena, aerospace engineer. And last but not least, Daniel Orient Martín, aerospace engineer. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to go into the story just because I think it's a great story for everybody to find out about the innovation that's happening in Valencia, this exemplary story. And without further ado, I would like to go into the first question. Um, what is this Hyperloop train? What is it? Could you please tell us a little bit? Okay, well, thanks, uh, Max, for your presentation. Um, Hyperloop is, is in real a trademark of uh, an old idea of uh, transport. So uh, it's an old idea for a transport concept. In this case, uh, we are thinking in eliminate the two forces that are acting, again, the movement of the train. So uh, if we are thinking in a car or in a train, uh, in a car we have two forces that are the, the friction between the wheels and the road, or wheels and railway in the case of the train, and uh, the friction between the air and the vehicle surface. These two forces uh, decelerate the vehicle, so we need energy, we need uh, fuel consumption, we need uh, electricity consumption to maintain the speed of our car or our train. If we can eliminate these two forces, uh, the movement is free, so we don't need uh, fuel consumption or electricity consumption to maintain the speed of the vehicle. I it's a good idea because if we can put a vehicle well, like this, this is only a model, a scale model, okay, but if we can put a vehicle like, like a train, uh, that is levitating I inside of a tube, and we produce vacuum conditions in, in the tube, so we extract all the air from the inside of the tube, we can maintain, the, in theoretically, we can maintain the speed of the train without uh, energy costs. We only need energy consumption to accelerate the vehicle. So I it's very interesting because, uh, in theory, we can arrive in a first step to 1,000 kilometers per hour, uh, and maintain this uh, speed without energy consumption. And if we can uh, pass uh, the transonic conditions, in theory, we could arrive to 5,000 or 6,000 kilometers per hour. I, it's very interesting because it's a, a low cost uh, transport and at high speed. So if we are thinking in, in a journey from Valencia to Moscow, so uh, if we are thinking in cross uh, uh, Europe, uh, now, today, we need 38 hours to, to do this journey by car and uh, six and a half hours more or less uh, by plane. If uh, in this uh, new con transport concept is like a train uh, and we only need uh, less than one hour. So in theory, we could turn the earth in six hours more or less. So it's not only a revolution in, in, uh, in transports, it's also a revolution in society. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. How, I'm curious, and everybody else is curious, how did we learn about this opportunity? Um, how did you create a team? How did this come forward? Okay, well, what triggered my curiosity was an interview of Elon Musk, and he said that if Hyperloop became a reality, airplanes would not be needed anymore. And I said, whoa, as Max introduced before, I'm an aerospace engineer, so I need airplanes. Out of but job. <laughs> I thought, well, this guy is just out of his mind, just don't care. But then I thought something. I'm not the first one thinking that Elon Musk is a crazy guy. People thought the same when he founded PayPal. And people thought the same when he founded Tesla Motors. 
And most likely, people thought the same when he founded the SpaceX to compete with the NASA. So Elon deserves a chance. And I started to read about it and investigate. And I had two conclusions. The first one was, OK, this guy is really crazy. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> but the second one is, OK, despite that, he may be right. Hyperloop is feasible. And most important, it's an open idea. SpaceX and Elon Musk encourage people and universities, companies, to help, to improve. That was amazing, but they had a problem. Engineering is not about me. It's always about us. So I needed a team. And I started to look for that team at the makers community in the UPV. And well, I found it. And after all, I think that I couldn't choose better. We are here today. Thank you. Just a quick, uh, a quick question, um, because from the moment you found out about this uh, uh, opportunity to compete to the moment that you had to deliver uh, the project, how long, how, did, how long was that timeline? Well, I realized that the opportunity very late. So it was like the first week of September, and we had to deliver our first proposal the first day of, of October. So we were really hurrying up. So in one month, your Hyperloop was developed, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> OK, fascinating. So what was it like working on this project? How was the experience um, coming together as a team? I heard that you were working on one computer between the six of you. Yeah, can you tell us about it? Yeah, so the first stage was uh, really interesting. We uh, met uh, for lunch or tw twice a week, and we did a lot of brainstorming. Um, then we sent the, the idea at the 1st of October, and two weeks later they told us, you have been selected, and we we were like, are you serious? We, we didn't thought of that. <laughs> so we started to, uh, well, that, that was a really chaotic um, stage because we had to look for um, the license for the simulation software. Uh, at the end, we, it was like 15th of uh, December, and we had to uh, send the final idea with all the calculations uh, the third week of, of January. Uh, I have to say that Juan, David, Danny and me are currently studying, uh, studying um, a master degree, so we had to deal with exam, presentation, lab sessions. And we were really lucky to have Herman, that was like our mother, and he, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, Angel, you have to study for tomorrow, go. Uh, Juan, you have a lab session, please. Uh, so as we had only one license for the simulation software. His computer was uh, day and night running uh, simulations, calculations. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, the third stage was in Houston, and that was an amazing trip, uh, this huge event with a lot of media and outstanding people. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to know actually a little bit more about that, the competition itself. What was the experience like? Yeah, so at first it was a bit, a bit scary, like we were ro worried because uh, there were coming teams from all over the world, like uh, Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology, some of the most prestigious universities. So we were like kind of saying like, okay, maybe wh why are we here? Like, and but then uh, we are also we were also like excited because we were taking part in a, a global competition, open challenge to develop the a new method of transportation, and that that was for us like uh, if if we can uh, uh, help the world to make it uh, better, uh, it, for us it was perfect. And when we uh, met other teams, we realized and, uh, that maybe we, we had a chance to win because all teams were based on, on repulsion and they used rails, but our system was different. And that made us think, maybe we have an opportunity there. Wow. And how did it feel to win two sections, not only one, but two sections of this competition? It was amazing, I think. Uh, the first day we had the first presentation, we had the design concept presentation and we came out like, well, this, this is going well, let's see tomorrow. The next day we had the, the propulsion uh, presentation and we were like, why there is two more judges here? Um, that doesn't fit. Um, and then people came out to, the, to our booth, uh, they started asking us and we were like, well, they've liked us. And actually we didn't expect to win anything because Vicente and I were actually planning the, the trip the next day to see NASA at Houston. And then we heard Makers UPB, and we ran across the stage to find Juan, David, and Angel, which were watching Danny receive the award. 
and then when when they gave us the final the top award the top uh, top design award uh, we were like whoa five people scream more like uh, like the whole MIT team we scream more like the, than them uh, it was awesome it was amazing this is the the picture we took right after winning and these are the the trophies which one signed the uh, is signed by Elon so <laughs> that's cool <laughs> Fantastic, congratulations. Uh, what's next, what, are you, what stage are you on now and how does the future look like with this project? What, where are we right now? Well, we are really glad with the project results and we are really happy with the prices, but this is not enough for us. We want to continue working and improving our design because we think that our idea is, is really close to Elon Musk's dream. So now it's time to, to translate our, our simulations and, and calculus, calculations into reality. And by the way, we need some, some volunteers for the first Hyperloop test travel. <laughs> Hands up, please. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure to go into that? <laughs> That's one of the wagons, by the way. <laughs> okay, we can talk about it later. <laughs> so I, I'm just uh, joking, maybe in the future, but now we are working in a levitation prototype and uh, we think that levitation system is one of our best points in the project because we levitate from the top of the tube by attraction instead of repulsion in the bottom like the rest of the teams. And this allows to save up to a 30% in cost of the whole project. That's it's a lot, it's interesting. So we are working in a, on a, on a sorry, pro levitation prototype and we want to bring it to California to the next step of the competition this summer and show the, the rest of the world that our design is not just numbers and simulations. It could, be, it could become a, a reality. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I think like everybody in this room, it's, it's very, very inspiring, very encouraging to see young people like you with great supervisors bringing up a project that not only makes the UPV and the, the universities of Valencia, the Valencia city itself, very proud of you and also on a national level. It's very, very fascinating. It's great to see that it's coming from here. Um, if you had one little sentence that you wanted to send out, uh, since you're on a platform like TEDx, uh, which stands for Technology, Entertainment, and Design, what would it be? Uh, well, I would like to say that if you find an opportunity, take it. Don't, don't let your, your fears win the battle. Thank you. Um, I would say like uh, never underestimate a, a small team because sometimes if you believe uh, if you love what you do you can reach uh, the highest of highs uh, if you if you are constant and you push hard. I, uh, one one uh, advice that uh, we learn in uh, with this adventure is that uh, it's interesting be constant questioning your old models and push for for original ideas. Thank you. So I would say, never hesitate. Luck is an attitude. Cheers. Yeah, and I think that some uh, statement that I think applies to our team is that uh, you can force your teammates to believe in your idea, but you can force your teammates to believe in a common uh, goal. And I think that we have applied that to our project. Absolutely. Yeah. Mine is the, the shortest one. Just keep imagining. Keep imagining. Thank you so much. Big round of applause for the Hyperloop team from the UPV. Muchas gracias. <laughs>